My name is Sam Vaknin, and I'm the author of Malignant Self-Love, Narcissism Revisited. The Encyclopedia Britannica has long been much more than a venerable print reference work. More than a decade ago, actually, the Britannica pioneered a freemium website. Some of the content was free, and other content was for pay. This website now flourished into a comprehensive walled garden of knowledge behind a paywall, but still worth it. Additionally, the Britannica publishes books and DVDs about specific topics and issues. Uh, these are the best primers and introductions available to a host of fields and areas from history to science. The venerable flagship print edition, Prince Encyclopedia, has been discontinued this year, 2012. Add to these the Britannica's newly minted apps, and you realize that the Britannica, more than ever, is actually now everywhere. In this review, I would like to concentrate on the Britannica Online. The Britannica's rich online content adds context and dollops of information to the already unsurpassed DVD. Indeed, buyers of any of the Britannica's physical products enjoy 30 to 180 days of free access to this cornucopian resource. Admittedly, this is subject to somewhat glitch glitchy registration of their products, which requires a simple workaround. At 30 to 50 US dollars annually, the Britannica Online is not cheap, and thus more suited to institutions, universities and libraries, than to individuals. It already has an academic edition, as well as editions geared at schools and libraries. The Britannica would do well to consider an affordable, more limited consumer version. But in an age of mobile, wireless smartphones, ultrabooks, netbooks, the Britannica Online is also a standalone product. It provides the entire content of the DVD and much, much more besides, in a variety of ways. Recently, the Britannica added a range of apps to its offerings. Owners of iPhones, iPads, Android smartphones, and Microsoft's Word 2013 can enjoy unfettered and free to cheap access to the concise Britannica or to its full text and multimedia depending on the app. Apps are available in several languages, including Japanese, Russian, Korean, and Spanish. I tested the website on four mobile phones, older versions of Sony Ericsson and Nokia, iPhone 3 and Siemens, and it worked well as far as text is concerned. Graphics and videos are an entirely different matter. But this is a problem common to all websites, from YouTube to the CNN. Britannica has an iPhone edition, and great topic-specific apps for the iPhone and iPad, as well as a concise Britannica app on Google Play, and a variety of delightful apps for kids, US presidents, snakes, knights and castles, Aztec Empire, Ancient Rome, rainforest, solar system, ancient Egypt, volcanoes, and dinosaurs, among others. There are also browser widgets, which facilitate the surfing of the Britannica online, and fully benefit from its visual content. Although Britannica Online sports a Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube presence, there does not seem to be a coherent strategy in place, either for content management or for marketing via social networks. Britannica's presence on these social network networking websites seems to be an afterthought, rather than anything organized. Online research tools include an A to Z, biography and subject browsers, and a sophisticated search box of the entire encyclopedia content, access to Webster's Dictionary, annals of American history, more than 350,000 primary source documents, and the entire Project Gutenberg ebooks collection, in-depth extended play videos about selected topics, coupled with an impressive assortment of other media, a quotations finder, a world atlas, a world data analyst, statistics by country, replete with analytical comparative and graphing tools, timelines on a multitude of subjects from sports to evolution, the browsable content of more than 500 magazines, otherwise not available online for free, and then on this day, born this day, this day in history feature, which aggregates date-sensitive content from the entire corpus of information. A selection of new and revised full-text articles is highlighted. The Britannica is also available in Spanish, Encyclopedia Universal, and in French, Encyclopédie Universalis. Britannica Online 
provides a gamut of educational resources, learning materials, study guides, interactive lessons, online activities, printable worksheets, and other exercises, teacher handbooks, educational websites, Britannica training documents for teachers, students, parents, and administrators, a monthly newsletter featuring new and updated content, and so on and so forth. The Britannica even organizes professional development workshops for educators. These are, uh, th there are also dedicated websites for kids, a smart math portal, an advocacy for animals gateway, and quizzes and image galleries. Everything is grouped into seven channels, which display rotating daily samples culled from the encyclopedia. There's history and society, arts and entertainment, travel and geography, science and technology, featured video, and the Britannica blog, as content-rich as the encyclopedia itself, by the way. There's also the aforementioned advocacy for animals. Any word in any of the articles can be double-clicked for its definition in the Merriam-Webster dictionary. In total, the Britannica Online comprises more than one million pages. There is a delightful, colorful, and multimedia-rich Britannica Online for kids as well. The paid content is augmented by loads of free features. Spotlights provide hand-picked multimedia-enhanced tours of broad subjects. Nobel Prizes, Hispanic Heritage, Shakespeare, Women Who Changed the World, American Presidents, Normandy 1944, Black History, the Holocaust, and the Oscar Awards, among others. Newsletters provide a plethora of theme-specific information. RSS feeds allow the user to explore places, people, and topics. Aggregated news feeds from the BBC News and the New York Times sit right atop the Merriam-Webster Dictionary search box. In a nod to crowdsourcing and to Wikipedia, users are invited to submit comments, corrections, and suggestions, which are then vetted by the Britannica's incomparable team of editors.